equal housing lender. 733, good morning information now. Coming up a little bit later on, we'll check some more news for you. That also includes uh, traffic and weather updates. But right now, as part of our local news segment, it's time to talk food with our favorite grocery gal, Amy Goldsmith. Amy's helped to launch and grow some of the most well-known brands that many of us eat or at least see on the grocery shelves. She's a food industry insider and lives her life as a food finder looking for the best new products and trends. You can follow Amy and direct message her any questions through Instagram at the grocery gal and also so a TikTok at Grocery.Gal. Well, good morning, Grocery.Gal. How are you? <laughs> good morning, Ben. All right, some more listener questions. Uh, we always appreciate the feedback, so let's keep that going, folks. Um, starting first with bananas. Uh, let's go bananas over bananas. Do they prevent leg cramps, Amy? Uh, that's the big so question. This is, this is a really interesting question. Um, my 91-year-old father-in-law has played tennis a couple times a week for years and years. And afterwards, he ingests, you know, one of those yellow mini mustard packets, like the kind that you get when you're ordering to go. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he, he rips the top off and he ingests it, the packet, after he plays tennis every single time because he swears it helps with cramping. Hmm. And I, he told me this years and years ago, I'd seen him do it years and years ago. And, and then I was at a, one of the last trade shows I was able to attend before COVID. And I came across a company from Texas, and the name of their product was called Pickle Juice. And their product is a beverage, and it comes in a variety of you know bottle ounces, from a shot to a larger eight-ounce bottle. And they say that it stops cramping, and that kind of caught my attention after speaking to my father-in-law. And it doesn't taste like traditional pickle juice. And what they explained is that it's really about the vinegar. Mm. And apparently what researchers now believe is that muscle cramps are actually caused by overstimulation of the motor, motor neurons in the nervous system. And, that those, and the nervous system relates messages and controls our muscles. And so there's evidence that drinks that contain vinegar, or I guess food products, can help prevent and relieve muscle cramping while exercising or after exercising. The vinegar actually sends a signal to the brain to tell the muscle to stop contracting and tells them to relax. And in fact, a number of studies have confirmed that real dill pickle juice is more effective than sports drinks with electrolytes at treating muscle cramps. Huh, did not know that. That's interesting. So uh, what about the bananas? Uh, you know, getting back to uh, the, the listener's question here. So it's fine to have a banana, but I guess if you're expecting that it will prevent painful muscle cramps, you might be disappointed. And increasing the intake of foods that are high in electrolytes, like potassium, I guess has not been shown to have that much of an effect in warding off muscle cramps. And even though electrolytes such as potassium do play a key role in keeping water properly balanced inside and outside of our body cells, researchers now, I guess, believe that muscle cramps are caused by more than an imbalance of electrolyte levels. It's an overstimulation of the motor neurons in the nervous system, and the vinegar stops the, the, the cramping. Interesting. All right, and because I've heard for years about this banana and the and the muscle cramp thing. So, but I, I following up. Then why does your father-in-law have a packet of mustard before or after <laughs> tennis? What's the deal there? <laughs> uh, because mustard has vinegar in it. Oh. It's the first ingredient usually, or second ingredient in mustard. So instead of drinking the real real pickle juice or the pickle juice drink that I found or straight vinegar. He brings a portable mustard packet, throws it in his bag, and rips it open and squeezes it into his mouth. And again, he swears by it. <laughs> well, if it works for him, we're not going to mess with it. There you go. Uh, we've got yeah, to... he's 91 and playing tactics, so <laughs> who am I to judge? Yep, we should all be so lucky. Uh, we've got grocery yeah. gal Amy Goldsmith joining us here on KUH all the time now, 737. So our next caller question, how many servings of fruit and vegetables should we eat daily? I know that, uh, you know, we always need to pay attention to what we're eating, but is there, a, you know, a set number we're looking for? So I'm glad that someone asked this question because a new study recently came out, and this is the, the last 10 days, that five servings of fruit and vegetables, five servings of fruit and vegetables a day can lower your risk of death and provides risk reduction for type 2 diabetes and cancer and cardiovascular disease. And compare those to those who consumed only two fruit and vegetable servings a day, those who consumed five servings a day had a 13% reduced risk of death. That's pretty significant. 13% reduced risk of death. And for background, this study was really comprehensive. 
is from the Nurses Health Study and the Health Professional Follow-up Study, and it included over 100,000 people from a 30-year period in their evaluation. So again, it's really comprehensive. And again, I guess the researchers also conducted a meta-analysis on 26 more studies, and they came up with five fruits Five servings of fruits and vegetables had a 13% reduced risk of death. All right. So are we talking five servings um, uh, together, or are we talking five servings each of fruits and vegetables? So the lower risk was associated with two fruit servings and three non-starchy vegetable servings. And so those vegetables included, like, green leafy vegetables. And non-starchy vegetables are artichoke hearts, asparagus, beets. Brussels sprouts, of course, broccoli, the, you know, the wonder veggie, uh, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, uh, cruciferous vegetables, uh, arugula, bok choy, again, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, and, and broccoli, cabbage, and collard greens, and then fruit, oranges, uh, strawberries, kiwi, and carrots as well. Yep, uh, those all sound good, but any recommendations on how to do that? We live <laughs> such busy lives, and so maybe finding an yeah. apple or, or a banana somewhere is pretty hard. Any recommendations? So, yeah, you know, it is hard. Um, you know, but start what works for you. You know, stick to your easiest, favorite, um, most accessible options, like you mentioned, and, and just find ways to add one serving of fruit and vegetable each day on top of what you're already eating, so you can aim for that by fruit and vegetables. And, and, and so let's say you're going to the market. Maybe before you go, you look up some veggie recipes and you put that on your grocery list. And, you know, I always say shop the perimeter of the store. And when you do, you know, start in the produce department and, and buy what you like, like I said, to begin with and what you know you will eat. And then maybe pick one fruit or vegetable and try that, you're not, that you don't know about or that you're not that familiar with or maybe you haven't had in a long time. And, and, and buy that and give it a try and you may like it and that might be something you can add you know onto your list that you, you you'll use weekly and you can build on that and make sure when you're you're making your meals that the vegetables and or fruit make up at least half the plate and then you compare it with other nutrient dense foods and and this may be a great opportunity for you to check in with your retail dietitian in your grocery store or a general nutritionist and they may have some great suggestions and recipes to help increase your consumption and they can possibly even meet you in the store and help guide you. Yeah, definitely. We have grocery gal Amy Goldsmith joining us here on KUHL. So we've talked about uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. So what about frozen or can do those count? So great question. We are so lucky where we live. I mean, we truly have access to the fresh fruits and vegetables in the country, if not the world. And if, you, if frozen and canned is sometimes easier, or if you're concerned about waste, it is okay to buy frozen and canned. Just make sure you read the label and that there's no added sodium or added anything else to the veggie or fruit. And if you're buying, buying canned fruit, make sure that fruit is in 100% juice, not syrup. And that you have to look a little deeper on the label. It should really be marked on the front, but make sure it says 100% fruit juice that is packaged in, not syrup. And listen, I, I guess this may not be easy for some, um, but like any habit, you know, the more you do it, it'll get easier and it'll become unconscious and it'll be kind of, you know, one part of your, your day. And adding a cup of berries to a smoothie or a handful of vegetables as a mid-morning snack or start with a salad before lunch or start with a salad before dinner. And, and again, every day will get a little easier with repetition. Use carrot sticks instead of potato chips as a vessel for dips and hummus and enjoy fresh strawberries and, and, and other berries as, as a sweet treat. Uh, we've talked about it here where fruit is actually supposed to be sweet. And we have just have so much sugar in our diet that it doesn't satisfy our sweet tooth anymore. And that's why we tend to churn to, you know, processed carbs and, and, and cakes and those kinds of cookies and those kinds of things. And fruit really should be satisfying that sweet tooth. So like I do, I leave berries, blueberries, strawberries, berries out all day on the counter, especially since COVID. So when I walk by or the kids walk by, we just grab a handful and we you know, throw it in our mouth, and that's what we're sort of reaching for. So make it easy for yourself. And uh, I, I just think that once you do it more and more, it'll, be, it'll become a habit. Oh, de definitely. It's a good habit, actually. And do smoothies count? I mean, they've got uh, fruit in there, oh, so does that count? <laughs> 
They do, but you have to be careful of the quantity and the size, and also what you're adding to it. You can add so much excess sugar and calories, or let's say adding yogurt to a smoothie. Green juice is great too, fresh pressed green juice. Um, it's, it's great, there's a bottle of about 70 calories. I try and drink it at least once or twice a week. Um, it, it can be a little pricey, but I'll tell you the truth. It's one of those drinks that I actually physically see a difference and feel a difference in. My skin looks so much different after I've had a bunch of green juice over hmm. you know, a couple days during the week. Yeah. And I really can highly recommend that. Um, also, there's this new trend. Us TikTok users know about it. It's called a nature cereal. And instead of a breakfast grain cereal, take a bowl, throw some pomegranate seeds in, some blackberries, blueberries, and or whatever kind of fruit you like. Add a couple, uh, some ice, and then instead of milk, use coconut water. And people are swearing by this. I haven't tried it yet because I need to get to the grocery store, but we are going to yeah. try it in this house. It sounds amazing. It's a parfait without yogurt. Ooh. It's a bowl of super fruit, yeah. and it's with a super hydrating liquid, and it sounds delicious, and it's a great way to get that fruit in. Oh, boy, that sounds good. Let me know how that is. I might have to try that myself. <laughs> um, so yeah. Our, yeah, next caller question, and I've heard this, too, in years past, but can eating ginger help motion sickness? So ginger has long been used as an alternative for motion sickness and nausea, but alternative is the key word here. It, it certainly can help some, but it also can cause the mild side effects, including heartburn, diarrhea, burping, and general stomach discomfort. So I recommend, of course, talking to a doctor about about your motion sickness, when you get motion sickness, and any suggestions that they may have. Um, I actually had ginger ale not too long ago. I just love it, and it was a treat for me. But I have to tell you, I hadn't had it in a long time. My stomach was killing afterwards. I don't know if it was the sugar content. I'm just not entirely sure. It has been years since I had it. But when I was pregnant, I could not eat enough of Reed's ginger cheese. Reed's <laughs> is a brand. They make all natural ginger ale, all natural ginger beer, and they've got these, these chews, they've got sugar cubes, it's all ginger, it's a ginger company, it's all natural, it's a great, great brand. I, I highly recommend Reed. Um, and by the way, for the record, I, I did have that Reed ginger ale when, when I got the stomachache. But um, the Reed ginger chews are great. Maybe give that a shot if you have mm. low motion sickness. Yeah. If it works great, if not, you, you certainly need to talk to your doctor. All right. I cannot handle ginger. It doesn't do anything for me. Uh, but same thing with, with honey for some reason. Um, after I eat honey, um, I usually, <laughs> I don't want to get too graphic, but sometimes have to go to the bathroom right after that. So I guess some things work for people, other things don't. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And look, honey is a sweetener. It has a lot of sugar. And so, you know, you you need to be careful with yes. that specifically. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that might that might have some effect on it. Or, 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 but I would definitely talk to your doctor. I, I'd be curious to know why. And the ginger too. Is the ginger raw ginger? Or like grated ginger yeah. or is, is it processed ginger? Um, that yeah. I don't know. The last time I had ginger, because um, I know there's ginger snaps. I'm trying to think of what, maybe I ate something like that. Uh, well, so a ginger snap, again, would have a lot of sugar in it. So you may be reacting to it. I'd be curious to see if you had ginger, let's say, just freshly grated that was cooked into like a stir fry or something. It mm. would have the same effect. Okay. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that. But it probably, <laughs> if it had a lot of sugar in it, that's probably why it did nothing for me. <laughs> Right, okay. exactly. All right, by the way, some great information. Thanks for your questions. You can follow Amy and direct message her any questions through Instagram at The Grocery Gal and then TikTok at Grocery